Hello and welcome to my video all about how to make your own miniature Chinese lanterns using thin card. These are fun to hang up individually or as a group or you can string them together to make a garland. I'll be showing you how to make one variation using red card and another using acetate and red crepe paper plus a couple more alterations you could make. For this project you will need some thin red A4 card, one sheet per lantern. If you want larger lanterns, feel free to use A3 card instead. Some gold thread or cord. I used some size 8 gold crochet thread and some 1mm gold satin nylon cord. And this is to make the golden tassels. I personally prefer to use thread to make tassels, but it's up to you what kind of look you want. You'll also need a pencil, a gold paint pen, or you could use a gold marker pen or some gold paint a scrap piece of thick cardboard, some super glue, a sheet of A4 white printer paper, PVA glue, some strong double sided tape, no more than 5mm wide ideally, although you could cut it down to size, some scissors, a ruler, an exacto knife and cutting mat, a sewing needle, an awl, a cloves peg and some strong thread. I personally used invisible thread so it wouldn't be seen running through the centre of the lanterns. And if you'd like to make the crepe paper version of the lantern as well, you'll also need an acetate sheet and of course some red crepe paper. Okay, so first we need to make a template using an A4 sheet of white paper. The following method helps you to create a sort of flower shape with equally spaced petals. You first need to take the A4 sheet and fold over a corner at the bottom of the page so that the bottom edge now lines up with the side edge. Then cut off the rectangle of single layer paper at the top to leave you with a folded triangle. Then fold this triangle in half along the long edge and then unfold it again. Take a ruler and a pencil and mark a point 3 inches from the 90 degree corner along one side edge. Also mark the point on the long edge where the fold that you just made begins. Join these two marks together with a ruler. Then fold the paper along this pencil line. Then take the other point of the triangle and fold that over too, so that this fold lines up with the edge of the other triangle point. You should end up with a shape like this. It might need a couple of slight alterations to coax it into this symmetrical shape, but this is the aim. Then you need to draw a pencil line down the centre of this shape. Draw a petal like shape as shown here and try to make it as symmetrical as possible. A couple of tips to bear in mind are as follows. Make sure that the pencil lines start about 1cm away from the point at the base of this shape. You also need to make sure that there are 6 layers of paper beneath where you make the pencil outline. So wherever you put the pencil outline, there has to be six layers of paper underneath. And this is particularly important at the top of the shape. You may have to start or finish drawing the petal shape a little bit below where those paper pieces cross at the top to make sure that you are drawing on top of six layers of paper. Finally, you can cut around that pencil line. Then open up the paper shape to find your flower template. Then take this paper template and place it onto an A4 sheet of thin red card. Make sure to place it in the centre and at least 1cm or so away from the edge on all sides. Then use a pencil to draw around the template. I used a white pencil just because it shows up a bit more clearly. Then at the end of each petal, add a circle as shown here. 
The circle should be about one centimeter in diameter. If you can use a glue stick or similar to draw around in order to create the circles, then that will be even neater. Once you've done that, cut out the shape, including the circles. I used my fingers to curl the card petals upwards into a smooth curve. We then need to add seven holes to the card flower shape. So to do this, we take the awl and we push it through the center of the shape and also through the middle of each little circle shape. Then place the shape on top of a scrap piece of paper and add a gold line around the edge of the shape. I used a gold paint pen to do this, which made it really easy, but just be careful because this kind of marker is permanent and will paint on anything. Next, I made a few tassels to hang from the lanterns. To do this, you first need to cut a thick or stiff piece of cardboard that's three inches wide. I used two different materials to make my tassels, some one millimeter satin cord and some crochet thread, both in gold. I personally found the thread a lot easier to make into a tassel so that's what I would recommend. You first need to cut two pieces of cord or thread that measure around 10 to 12 inches long and leave these to one side. Then take the rest of your cord and start wrapping it around the piece of cardboard. Try and spread the cord evenly over the cardboard. You need to keep wrapping until you think there's enough there to make a tassel. Then take one of the pieces of cord that you set aside previously and push one end under the wrapped cord. Position it at one side of the cardboard piece with an equal length of cord either side of the wrapped cord. Then make a double knot. Push the wrapped cord off the cardboard and place it onto the center of the other piece of cord that you previously cut. This piece of cord should lie at most one inch from the top of the wrapped cord. Then tie this cord around the wrapped cord in a double knot. And then wrap each end of this cord a couple of times around the wrapped cord before feeding it down through these horizontal wraps you've just made and into the body of the tassel. This is just to hide the ends of the cord. Finally, simply cut through all the loops at the bottom of the tassel and trim the ends to make them neat. You've now finished one tassel. You can then repeat this for every lantern that you want to make. To attach this tassel to the lantern, we first need to protect our work surface using a cutting mat or a thick piece of cardboard. Then lay the card flower shape that we made previously upside down onto the cutting mat. Then to attach the tassel, we take the two loose ends connected to the top of the tassel and feed them up through the hole in the center of the shape. These cords need to go from the front of the shape to the back. You then need to make a knot with the two loose ends of cord so that the tassel hangs where you want it to underneath the lantern shape. I would recommend having the tassel about one inch below the lantern. You then need to cut a long piece of invisible thread and tie the center of this thread around the tassel cord, just underneath the knot you just made. This piece of thread should be around 70 centimeters long. Then super glue the tassel knot onto the red card and this will also secure the center of the invisible thread. Then leave the glue to dry. The next step is to assemble the lantern, which I'm afraid is the fiddly bit. You first need to feed both loose ends of the invisible thread into a sewing needle. 
To assemble a lantern, you need to push this needle and thread through each hole at the end of each petal, moving from inside to outside, and going through the petals one at a time in a circle. And in between threading each petal, you need to add a little bit of glue to secure it in place. So to begin, you go through one petal from the inside to the outside, and then do the same with the petal next to it. Then add a tiny bit of PVA glue between the two little circle shapes and hold them together for a couple of minutes. I used a clothes peg to hold these circles together rather than using my fingers. One note that I want to add here is that instead of PVA glue, you could use double sided tape instead, as long as it's strong. You may still need to add glue as well as the tape, however using the tape as you go along might make it a little bit less messy. Then you need to thread the next petal, add a little bit of glue and attach it to the previously glued circles and again hold them together for a couple of minutes. This can get a little bit fiddly and messy but just try and hold all of the circle shapes together whenever you can to make sure that they don't suddenly burst apart. You need to keep going until all of the petals have been threaded and all of the circles have been glued. Note that pulling the invisible thread tighter makes the petals bunch up a bit more. And this part of the process is where you finalize the shape of the lantern. So just make sure that it's to your liking. I kept a clothes peg in place to keep the circles stuck together until the glue dried. I then added a drop of super glue on the hole at the top for extra security and to keep the invisible thread in place as well. Then I left that to dry. You can now just knot the invisible thread at the top to make a hanging loop and that's it, you've now finished one lantern. I'm now going to show you an alternative way to make this lantern using acetate sheets and crepe paper instead. And then I'm going to show you some extra embellishments you can add to add a little bit more detail. If you want to make the crepe paper design, you first need to take the paper template that you cut out in the previous step and draw around it onto an acetate sheet. You need to follow the exact same steps as before, which includes adding the little circle shapes at the end of each petal. I used a thick black marker pen to make it easy for you to see, but you should use something much fainter or finer, or in a red colour, so that the lines will not be seen in the finished lantern. You may also notice that I've drawn some more lines just inside the edges of the petals, but you don't need to draw these at all. I just wanted to show the area that's going to be removed in the next step. But first you need to cut out the shape from the acetate, then use this shape as a template to cut the same shape out of red crepe paper. Then you need to cut the sides of each acetate petal as shown here to make the petals much thinner. This is because we're using the acetate for support only, so we only need it to be a frame. We don't want it to be showing in the final lantern. You only need to cut off a few millimetres from each side of the petals. Finally, use double sided tape to attach the acetate and crepe paper shapes together. And then add holes in the centre and in the centre of each small circle, using an awl. Next, the same process is used to assemble the lantern as was used to assemble the original card lantern. So first attach the tassel by feeding the loose ends up through the centre of the shape and using a knot to keep it in position. Then cut a long length of invisible thread and tie the centre of it under the knot you just made and glue this in place. One difference I made when making this lantern was to use double sided tape rather than PVA glue to attach the small circles together. 
This made it a bit easier and a bit less messy, although afterwards I did still need to add a little bit of glue to secure the circles. So before I began assembling the lantern, I added a couple of pieces of double-sided tape either side of the holes at the end of each petal. Then when I needed to use that tape, I just took off the protective film. Again, the needle goes from inside to outside and you must travel in a circle. Once finished, I added a little bit of super glue to where the invisible thread emerges at the top and then left it to dry. And then the lantern is finished. I'm now going to show you a couple of extra embellishments that you can add to the lanterns to add a bit more detail. The first thing is to add some gold circles at the top and or at the bottom of the lanterns. To make these, you'll first need to cut a strip from some of your leftover red card. And this strip should be about one and a half centimeters wide. You then need to work out how long the strip needs to be to make a ring that fits on top of your lantern. Then add half a centimetre. So cut your strip of card into two pieces that are the length you've just calculated. You'll need two short lengths per lantern. In my case, I needed lengths of approximately five and a half centimetres. Then carefully score a line lengthways along the centre of each strip of card. Use scissors to then cut excess card from one side of this scored line to leave you with three small tabs, starting half a centimetre from the end of the length. I had to trim down the tabs on the side. So overall, what I need for each lantern is two strips of red card that are five and a half centimetres long with a tab on one end and three tabs on one side. I then used my gold paint pen on the front of each length to make it gold, but I didn't cover any of the tabs with the paint. You can just add the gold circles as they are to the top and the bottom of the lantern. However, I like to add some fringing to the circle that's going underneath. So all I did was use some super glue to attach some fringing of cord or thread to the back of two of these red strips. I made the fringe about one inch long. Then leave the glue to dry. Once the glue had dried, I added some small pieces of double-sided tape onto each of the tabs on the strips. Make sure you add the tape to the front side where you've added the gold color. Remove the protective covering from the tape at the end of the strips of card. Then roll the card around a pen or something similar to curve it into a ring and use the tape to fix it in place. Then remove the protective film from the tape on the card tabs, fold the tabs inwards and then attach these to the top of the lantern. To do this, you'll first need to feed the invisible thread through the ring. To more securely position the rings in place, I also added a little bit of super glue under the tabs. Then it's time to attach the fringed gold circles. So first uncover the tape at the end of the card strips. Then wrap a strip around the top of the tassel underneath the lantern and fix the ring shape in place. Then fold the tabs inwards, uncover the tape pieces and stick the ring to the underside of the lantern. Again, add some glue if the tape isn't strong enough to hold the ring permanently. And that's it, you've now made your embellished Chinese lanterns and you can now hang them up around your home. I really hope you've enjoyed this project and thank you very much for watching.